And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed. To you it shall be for food. Genesis 129. Man did eat angels' food. He sent them meat to the full. Psalm 78, 25. Everyday Manna with Lisa. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Everyday Manna. Aaron is with me today, and we are going to make one of his favorite foods, and that is pizza rolls. Only we are not going to buy the bag that you buy in the freezer department at the grocery store. We're going to make our own homemade pizza rolls. They could not be easier and they taste phenomenally good. To go alongside that, we're going to have a salad, Erin. I know you don't like salad, but I do. So we're going to have iceberg wedges, kind of go retro a little bit, with a homemade buttermilk dressing with blue cheese and bacon. It's going to be fabulous. And then to go for dessert, we're going to make chocolate haystacks, which are very, very easy and very, very good. So, But we, got, we need to get started on the pizza rolls. Aaron is going to dice. Now, this is one of those recipes. You can add whatever you like or don't take away what you don't like. Whatever your favorite ingredients for pizza, what it, when you get pizza, whatever you like on your pizza, you can put in this pizza roll. We like pepperoni. So Aaron is going to start with about a cup or so of pepperoni. Now, if you can get the stick pepperoni, you can use that. But today we've got the sliced, which is what you find most of the time in the store. And Aaron is going to dice that up. Let me show you how I want it. Stack them. If you, Aaron, if you'll stack them up like that even, then you can take your knife like this and you want to cut them, tuck your fingers back, mm -hmm. cut them into pieces about like that just little cubes of pepperoni, and we will get that going. So I need all that pepperoni diced up. Got it? Okay, and don't eat it all. I know you love pepperoni. Now, I like a little bit of green pepper, so I'm going to take a little bit. This is about half of a big green pepper. If you have a smaller one, that's fine. If you don't like green pepper, leave it out. But you want to mince it very fine, because remember, we're going to be making pizza rolls. So if you like mushrooms, you could put mushrooms. Now my recipe calls for an ingredient that Aaron just simply does not like, and he has just about to had a fit this morning because he saw them on the set. But we, I love olives on pizza. So I would be putting these olives, I'd chop these up and put them in there, but Aaron doesn't like them, so we're gonna leave out the olives today for Aaron. But if you like olives, you put them in there but we are gonna add a little bit of flavoring to our pizza rolls. You like pizza rolls, don't you, Erin? Mm -hmm. That's one of those things that this child loves to eat is pizza rolls. And he can eat a bunch of them, let me tell you. How you doing over there, buddy? Good. Oh, remember that once when Christian came over? Uh-huh. And we ate all the pizza rolls? I know, Christian is his little cousin, and he comes to our house sometimes and stays with us two or three days. And they clean me out of food when they come, but that's okay. I love it. I seem to have a house full of children on any given occasion. And you know what? That's perfectly fine with me. I'm going to cook the, I'm going to saute the green pepper, and I'm going to add a little bit of onion and just a little bit of canola oil or olive oil, something that you have. We're going to cook this because the egg rolls, or not egg rolls, but pizza rolls, but we're going to be using egg roll wrappers. Don't take that long to cook. So I want to have the ingredients ready to go. So in this saucepan, we're going to heat that up, and then we're going to add our pepper and our onions to it. And I'm going to mince up some onion and hope I don't cry. I'm telling you, if I'm used to, I could chop onions all day long, and they did not bother me at all. I didn't tear up or anything. And now it just seems like every time I cut onions, I have to go wash my face. So we're going to try to do it today without crying. How's it going over there? You're good. You're good? You're going to have to watch your fingers, please. I am. You're doing a good job. We're going to chop a little bit of onion in there because all pizza sauce has onions in it. And if you're doing cooking for children, mince it up fine because they don't want to have the chunks. 
or at least mine don't. Most children don't. They don't want big chunks of tomato or onions or anything like that in their sauce. So I'm gonna mince it up extra fine for Aaron, really just for the flavor. And you could, if you wanted to, grate this or chop it all in a food processor really, really fine. But I'll just use my knife and get it done. We're gonna add a little bit of garlic. And again, whatever toppings that you like on your pizza is what you would want to put inside your egg rolls. My oil is heating up and I have one clove of garlic because you cannot have pizza in any form without garlic. That's just Italian food is known for that, for garlic and we love it. And it's actually very healthy. One of the healthiest flavor components that you can add and onions are too. I didn't know if you knew that, but onions are very, very healthy for you. Yeah, just throw that away. That was the little preservative pack. Just put it here, give it to me. In the pepperoni, you don't wanna eat that part. Just throw that away. And I'm feeling the onion juice. <laughs> it's coming on. All right, don't add your garlic in at first because garlic will burn very quickly and you do, do not want that. So we're gonna add our onion and our green peppers to the skillet and let that saute. How you doing over there, buddy? I'm doing good. This is a potent onion. Put that other half out of my reach. Tearing up, I know you do it at home, and I still haven't found <laughs> whatever that is. Some people send me emails and they say, do it under cold water or freeze it, and I, for me, none of that works. I don't know what the trick will be, but that doesn't work for me. We're gonna saute these vegetables until they're just tender. You don't want to, go to um, take them too far. You don't want them to start browning at all. I'm gonna add just a little bit of salt, maybe a teaspoon or so, and a pinch of pepper, just cracked black pepper. This is my little pepper bowl. Remember we did this on an earlier program where I take the whole peppercorns and grind them in my little coffee mill that I have just for spices. And that works real well for just uh, to have it on hand and then you don't have to crank your pepper mill. I love pepper mills and I collect them and I love fresh ground pepper, but I do that when I'm cooking a lot. I'll just grind them up and keep it in a little bowl. All right, you going okay over there? Yes. All right. Now, traditionally, the pizza rolls that you might have had in the past that you buy in the freezer department have a pasta dough on the outside. Well, I don't, to be honest, I don't know how to make fresh pasta. So I don't, I don't do that. But what I do use is something that I use for so many things, and this is egg roll wrappers. A lot of people think this is only for Chinese food and nothing could be further from the truth. I make Mexican egg rolls, I make of course Chinese egg rolls, I use these for uh, wonton, spicy wontons, crab rangoons, and also use them for pizza rolls, and that's what we're gonna do today. So have yourself a package of egg roll wrappers. I'm gonna add my garlic. We're gonna take a quick break. I'm just gonna let this saute and add his pepperoni, and we'll be right back in just a minute, and I'll show you how to roll these up. Now, welcome back. We have finished the pepperoni, and I'm just adding the pepperoni to the, watch your hand, to the skillet, and just letting that briefly saute for just a second. Then we're going to add, look at that, oh, I could just so eat that over pasta, just cook spaghetti noodles or penne pasta or something would be delicious. We're going to add a jar 
uh, like about 10 to 12 ounces or so of just jarred pizza sauce that you buy in the section over there where you buy the pasta sauces, they make pizza sauce. If it is not liquid enough, and I think this will be fine, you could also add a four ounce jar of the um, just tomato sauce. But I don't think I'm gonna need that today. Sometimes I find it's drier than others. I don't really understand why that is that way. Then that's done, basically. So cut that off. You're gonna add two cups of an Italian cheese blend. Buy this in the, would you put that in the sink back there, baby? Um, in the dairy section with the shredded up mozzarellas and all that. If you can't find it, you can use the, um, just make a blend of like shredded mozzarella, provolone, or some kind of blend of cheeses that you like. And see how that comes together and that just binds that all together. Take it off the heat and let it cool for just a second. And I don't think I'm gonna need my tomato sauce today. Sometimes I find I do and sometimes I don't. It, it really depends. Now, Swipe off our board. Erin, you can help me roll these up, okay? You're gonna roll them up. Now these aren't gonna be the little mini, you know, one inch square pizza rolls like that you buy. These are bigger, so they're a lot more substantial. And I'll show you how to do them because you've never done these. Take a egg roll wrapper. Make sure that you separate them because one time I didn't do that and I ended up with a very, very thick outer layer on an egg roll, and it, it really wasn't that good. So they, they do kind of stick together. They're coated with cornstarch. And this one is being a little no stubborn. Feels, no wonder it feels so smooth. This is two together, and I can't get them apart. See if you can. They're being obstinate today, or my hands are cold, one of the two. See, he got it. Okay, thank you. It's okay one. if it rips a little. Thank you. Make sure yours is just one. It is. Okay, I hope. take your egg roll wrapper, put it in front of you on the diagonal, and then take a spoonful of your filling. You watching? Put it kind of in the center, just like that. Be careful, because this is hot. You can let it cool just a minute if you want to. And I've got my oil heating on the stove on like medium heat. And then take your bottom, you ready? Take the bottom, turn it up once, like that. Then fold over the edges to seal it in. Fold over your edges just like that. You ready? Okay. And then gently roll it over, just like that. Take your finger, dip in just plain old water and go along that outer edge and then roll it up. And sometimes I take a little extra water and go on the outside and that's it. Just like you do an egg roll, but only the filling is a pizza roll. So let's get these in, Erin, how about it? Well, let's roll one more. This is hot, let me turn it down just a little. I don't wanna overheat my oil. Very good, buddy. You wanna do another one? Mm -hmm. Okay. You did a good job. There's you one more. And it doesn't matter if it tears a little. Let's put that side on the bottom. Oh, that's that, that's right. okay because it, it doesn't matter. It's gonna get all rolled up. See, your cheese is all melted. The filling is already cooked. Really all we're gonna do is crisp up the outside. They're really good. And so much better for you than the frozen ones. Now I do buy sometimes, I'll buy the frozen ones and keep in the freezer for him to get a little snack sometimes, but these are so much healthier and there's no preservatives. You control what goes inside. Done. Most all of the foods that you buy, you can make homemade. It's just a matter of taking the time. And you really could, if you wanted to fry these up and let them cool and then freeze them, you could do that too. So we'll make one more and then we'll show you how to fry them up. Get your oil hot. Don't put these down in cool oil. And it's nice to have a helper because he's quicker than I am. There you go. Be careful, that filling's hot. And then fold it over 
This is how you make egg rolls, by the way. If you missed that program, this is the way that you fold over for egg rolls. These little things, the little egg roll wrappers really make a great, great packet, if you will, for many different kinds of filling. Gently put it seam side down in your oil. Be very careful. These only take about two minutes in total to cook. And then once it's, it crisps up, and if some of the filling comes out, that's okay. It crisps up very quickly, and then you'll flip it over and fry the other side. Erin, you can be separating these, and we'll make the rest of them. All of it. And then flip All them them. over when it's golden. All of them. Yes, please. And there you go. And then you want to line a paper towel or a baking rack. Stand back. It's hot with paper towels. And there you go. That is how you make homemade pizza rolls. Now, that is very easy. You saw us do it. It is not difficult. Anybody could do this. It just takes a few minutes. And get your paper towels ready to go. And really, the filling is done. So all you're doing is frying that outer wrapper. And that's homemade egg rolls. They're very easy. Whew, about splattered myself. And very good. Let them cool for a minute, though, before you eat it, because that filling's hot. And that is homemade egg rolls. I'm going to take a quick break and clean up. When I come back, we're going to make our salad and our chocolate haystack. We'll be back in just a minute. Now our pizza rolls are done and it is all I can do not to eat those things right now, but we have to finish the program. So we're going to make our salad. Aaron is going to start on the dressing. Before he starts on that, let me tell you kind of, I'm multitasking a little bit here. I have a pot of simmering water and I have got one bag of chocolate chips. Now I'm using dark chocolate because that's what I like and it, it is healthier for you. Actually dark chocolate is good for you. So I'm melting one bag of dark chocolate chips over some simmering water. Quick little hint right here, I don't have a double boiler. So I just put a glass bowl over the water, but make sure that bowl does not touch the water or it will scorch your chocolate. To that, I am going to add just a tablespoon or so of just the solid shortening and what that's going to do is cause that um, chocolate to harden and firm up just a little bit once we mix it with our thing. So this is for dessert. Just kind of wanted to give you a heads up of where I'm at on that. I'm just going to let that melt for a minute. Now, while we're doing that, Erin, you're going to make the dressing. We have half a cup of buttermilk, two tablespoons of just white vinegar, and a couple of tablespoons of mayonnaise. I like the mayonnaise that has the olive oil or canola oil base. I like the olive oil the best myself, but then, here, let's put the rest of that in there. Then to that, we're gonna add, can have that, so take that. We're gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper, just a pinch, a little more. There you go, and, and just a couple, three pinches of salt. I use kosher salt, but you can use whatever kind of salt that you like. One more okay. pinch. No, let's do one more. No, we need a little more. Let's do a big pinch. Okay. Now, whisk all that together, and that's your dressing. That's very, very easy to make. It's not complicated at all. I need to turn my water down. It's boiling. You want it to just be at a simmer. 
because you will burn your hands otherwise. Just keep an eye on your chocolate. See how it melts down in there? That's what you want. It's starting to melt, and that's what I want. You could also put this in a microwave if you wanted to and do it for like 30 second increments, but be very careful. Turn your water down because you really just want it simmering. Let that go for a minute. I have a head of iceberg wet lettuce that I have cored. The way I core lettuce is I punch it down on the counter and the core comes right out. I'm gonna cut this into wedges. This is kind of one of those retro desserts that you know, used to be all the rage, the iceberg lettuce wedges. I'm gonna make six wedges out of it. I'm just only gonna do half of a head for the program here today, but we're gonna line this up on just a pretty little platter. Put them cut side up, because they look prettier that way. And this is a very simple, simple salad. Then drizzle your dressing over top of your iceberg. Reserve the rest for later. And here's where I need to stir my chocolate. Hang on one minute, let me get a whisk. Don't forget your chocolate. Gotta learn to multitask in the kitchen. I think that's truly what scares most people about cooking, is the need to be able to do three or four things at one time. Then drizzle or sprinkle over, Aaron. I'm gonna let you finish this up. Sprinkle just some bacon bits, or if you have uh, leftover bacon from breakfast that morning, just crumble it up and put that over top of the salad wedges. You could really do this with any kind of dressing that you like. That's enough. And then I like blue cheese, so we're gonna put some blue cheese crumbles over top of that, just to just sprinkle a little bit over top. My store did not have chives today, so we are just gonna use some green onion tops. If you don't want to uh, add the green onion, you don't have to. If I could find chives, I absolutely would be using chives, but in the absence of that, kind of the same look, just sprinkle over some little green onions. And that's it, there's your salad for your meal. Now let's get on to dessert. The best part, <laughs> cordon air. We need to let this melt just a little bit more. And then for the basis of this, we are gonna use just purchased, let's put these cutting boards back here with all this oniony stuff. Excuse me, just one minute. Just some purchased chow mein noodles that you buy in the Asian department of your grocery store. The little chow mein noodles. I love these things on salads and just any, they're so good on so many different things. You want about three cups or so. You want to melt your chocolate. If you whisk it, it goes a little quicker. And see, it just melts beautifully. Look at that, how pretty that looks. That onion. You can still smell the onion? Yeah, I can too. And then turn your heat off. That's a quick, easy way to melt chocolate. Or, like I said, you could put it in the microwave on like 30 second increments. Don't go any more than that because you don't want to burn your chocolate because chocolate will seize and burn very, very quickly. Look at that. Mm. Smells good. The shortening does two things. It'll, when that cools, it'll firm it up, but it also it, it allows it. You see how glossy? Can you see how glossy and pretty that chocolate is? Then we want to add our chow mein noodles a little bit at a time. Let's get rid of the whisk. And mix that all together, coating those chow mein noodles. These are great salads, by the way. You could even sprinkle a few of those over the lettuce if you wanted to. No, I don't want to today, but you could do that. Add it a handful at a time until it's all stirred up together. Line a baking sheet with wax paper or parchment or, uh, I love the nonstick aluminum foil. And you're gonna drop these onto that paper by tablespoons, and then you're gonna let it cool. Sometimes you need to put it in the refrigerator till that chocolate hardens back up. I'm gonna stir that all together. This is a very easy, easy 
recipe. You could add nuts if you wanted to. You could add some um, almonds or chopped up pecans or walnuts or whatever you wanted. Or you could add in maybe some M&M type candies or leave it just like this. Now you need to let that cool for just a minute to let that chocolate kind of harden up just a little bit. And then all you're gonna do is take a couple of spoons. For time's sake, I'm not gonna have time to let it cool. But in order for it to stick together, you just kinda wanna drop it onto there. See how we do that? And then just let them cool. Chill them in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes and they'll be ready to eat. And that's our chocolate haystacks. We are out of time. Thank you for joining with me and helping me in the kitchen. I love to have my boys with me in the kitchen. Making memories is what you do. You want to tell them bye and that we'll see them next time? Right there. Bye and see you next time on Everyday Nana. Thank you for watching Everyday Nana with Lisa. This program is made possible by viewers like you. Your support is continually needed to keep Christian programming on the air. Please send your best financial gift to Living Faith Television in care of Everyday Nana, P.O. Box 1867, Abingdon, Virginia, 24212.